Copilot, could you summarize my meeting notes? We talked about the best practice in project management. Here are some key points. Define the project scope. This is the first step in any project. In this video, I'll teach you how to make a custom GPT in Microsoft Copilot. I will also teach you how to prompt in Copilot to get better results. I will go over the do's and downs of Microsoft Copilot. I'll teach you how to use the voice memo function on your cell phone. And a bonus, we will go over the notebook function in Microsoft Copilot. I am now in Copilot and the first thing I want to show you is to make a custom GPT. GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. So in other words, we will kind of give custom instructions to Copilot. So when we have a repetitive task to do, like writing emails multiple times, calculating some specific ratios, by example, we don't have to always give back the context to Copilot. So I am on Copilot here. And as you can see at the right, we already have some Copilot GPTs. If I click here on see all Copilot GPTs, Microsoft already gives us some default GPT. By instance, if you would like to create images from words, you could use this designer here. Or if you want a vacation planner, you could use this GPT here. The beauty with this is that you can create custom GPT. As you can see here at the bottom, I created one for my French podcast. It is a title generator because I always had to tell Copilot, hey, I'm doing a podcast on the business side of things and stuff. So I don't want to repeat it every time I wanted to find a title for one of my episodes. So today we'll go through how to create a new Copilot GPT and the tips and tricks and we'll measure the results when you don't have a custom GPT versus when you do. So as you can see here, use the configure or create tool to create a custom Copilot GPT that you can keep private or share. That's the beauty of thing. I'll click here and then it brings me in the Copilot GPT builder. So you have two options at the top. You can go into configure, which is where you're going to enter your data manually, or you can go with create. In create, I advise you to read these different tips here for creating a quality Copilot GPT. You will learn in this video pretty much all the tips that they give you here, but try to create a short and catchy name that will describe its function so you can find yourself in your own mess when you go back to Copilot. Use clear and unambiguous language, make the prompt specific, use questions or statement, and make sure you have the necessary rights when you upload any content in this. For this very specific example, we could start chatting with Copilot here, but we'll go into configure and I will show you step by step on how to create your own custom GPT. So we will name my GPT. I am a professional accountant and I write emails to client very, very often. So let's do it like that. It will be email generator for a professional accounting firm. Here you go. And what the description is briefly describe what this copilot GPT does. This GPT will help me will help me draft professional emails for professional accounting accounting firm clients. Here you go. And then you have instruction in your Copilot GPT here. They ask you instruct your Copilot GPT how to behave, what rules it should follow, what purpose does it serve, does it respond with a certain style. So we'll start typing every line that we want or GPT to keep in mind every time we'll go back to it. So I already typed these instructions in and we'll go over together. We are a professional accounting firm and this GPT will be to draft emails to our clients that are in the banking field. Every time we'll start the email, GPT will take this into account. So we have very professional emails, right? Every email you will draft will be a professional tone. So we don't get sued by our client with like two friendly emails, you know, stuff like that. At the end of every email, I want you to add my professional accountant unique ID, which is 656545. So we have something to remove from our head. Don't need to type it ever again. Make sure to add 
Professional Accountants Inc. It's a pleasure to serve you at the end of every email. One more thing that we can forget. And also please use a bullet point format so it is easy to read for my clients and we get the best reply rate on our emails. All of this is really theoretical. You can also use the create tool if it's easier for you. Copilot will also ask you a question. Are you sure? What shall we consider? So maybe it can be easier for your first one if you're not used to it. If we go back to configure, we have a knowledge section. This is very, very powerful because Copilot can take a lot of data on which he will base also his answer. So on top of the instructions you gave him, you will be able to upload a file here. So you can basically add any file if you have the financial statements of specific clients that you want to put in there maybe to add some data that you want to send to your specific client if you want to make a specific gpt each one for each of your client you could add their previous financial statements you could ask straight up copilot what are the sales from previous year, year for this client and it's going to go in the pdf find this information for you if you need Copilot to browse through the web, go to Google to find some answers, maybe not useful for an email. So I will basically uncheck that. But if you will have a different GPT, let's say you are a walking guide tour like I am during the weekend and you want some Quebec City data, then you could just check that and it will allow Copilot to go search through the web. And the difference between Copilot and ChatGPT is that there is no cutoff for his knowledge. So you can find information from yesterday or two days ago. And the last checkbox is actually if you want it to generate image with DALI, the image generation system, then you can check this for my specific case. We probably don't need to add any image for drafting email for a professional accounting firm. So I will leave both of them on check pretty much. Once you click on publish, as you can see, you have the link here and then you can just copy this link and send it to your team so they can access your custom GPT that you just created. All right, to the left, I have a generic GPT and to the right, I selected my email generator for a professional accounting firm. I typed in both of them the same prompt, draft me an email for a client BMO, and I'll click submit and we'll compare the results to see how my custom GPT is performing. As you can see to the left, it did a really, really generic email, no bullet points, nothing else. To the right, as we said in our custom GPT, it used some bullet points as we asked it. And as you can see at the very bottom, Professional Accounting Inc., it's a pleasure to serve you, unique ID 656545. So our custom GPT did its job and we can start a new topic and once again, write another email to another client. Now I'll teach you which are the right ingredients for a perfect prompt. If you want to get the most out of Copilot, you should use the following prompt formula. Goal, context, source, expectation. A goal is what response do you want from Copilot? The context is why do you need it and who's involved? The source is which information sources or samples shall Copilot use? And the expectation is how shall Copilot respond to best meet your expectation? Similarly to what we did with the custom GPT, I will compare a very generic prompt to the left with a very detailed GCES formula prompt on the right. So to the left, we have give me activities to do in Paris, very generic. And to the right, we have a goal, give me a five bullet point of the nicest things to do in Paris. We have a context. I am going there with my colleague, making us a group of four people, all between 25 and 35 years old. We have our source, base your research on the best reviews from TripAdvisor in the last year. And then we have our expectation. It is for a work-related activity. So I want you to respond in a professional tone. You know, you don't want to get fired because you have a very rude email. We'll click submit on both of them and we will be able to compare the response of our very, very generic prompt on the left and to the right 
we will have our answer from the GCSE formula. I don't want to get into too much details here, but the main difference between these two activities is that Copilot really understood our source based on the top reviews from TripAdvisor in 2023. Here are five highly recommended activities to do in Paris. As you can see, on the left, we also have the Eiffel Tower. I mean, of course, but we have very different activities from left to right. If you want to learn more on how to prompt, I have a 10 minutes video up here on the subject. As you might have already noticed, it is really important on how you talk to Copilot in order to get the most accurate answers. So I thought we could go over the do's and downs. First do's is to be clear and specific. Also to keep it conversational. And for the third do, I will jump into Excel. It is to give example and I will illustrate my point here. We are in Microsoft Excel. I have a table with some data. We are selling candies today. Okay, real quick. We have the quantity sold in column four here. So we have a table and I will ask Copilot to create a running sum. So I will click on the prompt here, add formula columns, and it's going to tell me I can quickly add new columns with formulas, select a suggested prompt. So I will ask Copilot add a column that does a running sum of quantity sold. And let's see what Copilot gives me. And see, I was very, very, very vague here in this specific case, and I didn't give any example, but it still worked. If you click on insert column, it actually did work. One thing though, I would love to tell you is to be extra careful because I did this countless time and it is the beauty when you do a video with AI, it doesn't give you the same answer every time. But what I will suggest is actually this prompt. I'll try to make it a little bit bigger for you, but I will suggest to do this prompt. I want you to add a column doing a running sum and we will give example by example. If my first line of quantity sold is a hundred, I want you to give a hundred in this new column. If the second row of the quantity sold is 75, I want you to, I want you to give me back 175 in this new column. Here we go. We click submit and it should give me a new column that is basically the same that it just did because AI is so unpredictable and it will calculate a running sum. So it is really important that you give an example because sometimes it's just going to avoid confusion and the AI will generate the right answer most of the time. And see how Copilot is brilliant. It just told me it looks like you already have a column with the running sum of the quantity sold. Is there something else you would like me to do? But of course, we jinxed it with the previous prompt. <laughs> the other do's are use punctuation, use capitalization. It will just make sure the AI gives you better answer and be polite as well and provide details. In other words, you should talk to Copilot just like you talk to your mom. Pretty simple, right? As for the downs, it's basically the opposite of the do's. So don't be vague. Don't give conflicting instructions. You have a button that you can click to start a new conversation. As you can see here at the bottom, you can click on new topic. So make sure you treat it topic by topic. Another very cool feature I want to show you is to use the voice memo feature on your cell phone. Yes, there is a co-pilot app and this is perfect when you want to save time when you're driving with the kids in the back and you want to talk to the AI. I'm kidding. Actually, don't do this while driving, but we'll test the voice memo feature together. I'll show you something pretty cool. So we're just going to click on record and I will actually use the same example that we saw on the how to prompt the Paris example. Give me five bullet points of the nicest things to do in Paris. I am going there with my colleagues we will be a total of four people between 25 and 35 years old. Base your research on the best reviews from TripAdvisor in the last year. It is for a team building activity. So I want you to respond in a professional tone. A few moments later, based on the best reviews from 2023, 
Here are five highly recommended team building activities in Paris for your group. So now you can just swap back real quick to your computer and you have this prompt in the recent prompt to the right that has just appeared and you can see on your computer what's going on and you can go from there and copy paste in your Outlook if you want to draft the email. One feature I wanted to highlight from Copilot that is pretty cool, it is the notebook feature. What's the difference between the notebook and the regular Copilot. The main difference is that it allows you up to 18,000 characters right here to ask any question while the normal Copilot conversational discussion, let's say, is only 4,000. So let's say I have found a book on the project management and I want to summarize one chapter. The chapter is chapter number three, the project life cycle phases. I will ask Copilot could you summarize this chapter from this book? And then when you press enter, it doesn't send. You have to click on shift enter. So it's really a way to take meeting notes, by example, or to actually record from your microphone and ask Copilot to do something with these multiple words. We are going to try it here and we're going to click submit. I have 8,000 characters and let's see what kind of work Copilot gives me in the notebook area. Please note, this is very important that you won't have the history with these chats as you have in the other version of the Copilot converse conversational mode, let's say. As you can see, the 8,000 characters that I copy pasted from this book I found online on the project management have been summarized in less than 300 words. It can speed up your workflow pretty, pretty quick. I made the best Microsoft Copilot full course and it's right here under 45 minutes. You'll learn everything you need to know on Microsoft Copilot. Cheers. I'm sorry for any confusion, but as an AI, I don't have the ability to make phone calls. However, I can certainly help.